Hello everyone, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. I am here to do another ink exploration. You can see my page is all ready for swatching of inks. And before I even get to that, I'm gonna show you what I used to stamp the page with. This is a currently inked stamp collection from Everyday Explorers Co. And I used this main stamp here as well as the brand in name. And I thought I'd just try something different. I love the way that it looks already. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. What I have here for my supplies is my Galen Leather A5 notebook, which has 52 Josem Tamoy River paper. I also have my Kakimori brass nib on my River City Pen Co nib holder. I also have my Speedball nib here. It's the size B2 in, this is the actual Kakimori wood nib holder, and that's what I put this on here. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I almost didn't do a brown ink exploration because I didn't even know if I had enough brown inks to warrant a full exploration like this. And then when I pulled them all out, I thought, oh yeah, I do have enough. So <laughs> the first one is a Pilot Eroshizuku Inaho. Now some put this in the yellow category, but I put this in probably both the yellow and the brown. It's got a bit of both in there. So what I'm gonna do, like you can see, there's probably about half of that bottle left and I've shared this with a few friends. It's now getting to the point though where I'm like, I really like what I have and I'm just going to keep what I've got and use it where I can. Oh, that's pretty. I'm going to let some of that ink move around a bit here. Then take some on my brass nib. So this is Pilot Eroshizuku. Inaho. And it really is a beautiful ink. And I'm just going to do the line widths here so you can kind of see what it looks like at the different line widths. I really like that. And I think I'm trying to see if I have enough room to put it like a little swirl here as well. Perfect. You can see how that's more of like a yellowy brown, but I really love the way that that looks. So that's Pilot Eroshizuku Inaho. The next one I have may not necessarily be classified as a brown. It, it's called Troublemaker Kelp Tea. So it looks like it's a little bit green in the bottle and may end up actually, it starts off green and then it, it's hard to explain, which is why I wanted to swatch this one. I didn't think that browns were generally that interesting and now if you're looking at this particular ink color yes it does just look like a green but what i love about this one is how it dries so let's put some here on my brass nib so this is troublemaker so it does look green and I'm going to do, I'm going to get ink on myself, aren't I? And this is kelp tea. It's more of like a browny green because it's got the chromo shading effects here. You can see some of the brown in that first portion of the line width. But let that dry. And I feel like I'm trying to convince you that it's brown, but really let that dry, see how it goes. And then you let me know down in the comments below whether you think it's brown or green or both. So that is Troublemaker Kelp Tea. The next one I have is a favorite of mine. This is Sailor uh, Kitsune Biori. Now it looks brown on the bottle, but when you actually swatch this, this one is an interesting one because it looks brown, it looks pink, and then it just dries to a lighter dusty pink color. It's such a fun ink and I've used it in a few pens but I've also given this to a few friends in ink swaps and I just think it's fantastic. I love being able to swatch in this in these stamps actually. It gives me a little bit more structure but makes it look more, I don't know, artistic, <laughs> more creative. So there on my brass nib. So this is Sailor Yurameku. I 
forgot what it was for a second. Kitsune Biori. And doing the figure eights up here. And doing the line widths down here. Oops, let's get a little bit more on that nib there. So yeah, it does look more... I feel like now that I'm comparing it to other browns, it looks more pink. But then when I put it in with the other pink inks, it looks brown. So it can't decide. It can't decide. But then even when I'm putting it down there, it looks more brown than actual pink. So it's one of those where you're like, is it brown? Is it pink? I don't know. But I like it anyway. So I'm including it in here. So that is Sailor Yurameku Kitsune Biori. The next one I have here is Diamine Coco Shimmer. This was one of the first bottles of ink that I ever purchased for my collection. And it was a shimmer ink and I had to do it and I still have it. I haven't sold this ink off, but I do need to make more of an effort to use this ink because once you look at it, oh, it's one of those more like reddish browns but I think it looks that way because of the gold shimmer that's in here. Put a little bit more shimmer down. It's such a fun ink and it's one of the more, I guess, I say classic, but one of the older shimmer-tastic inks. Uh, I've had it in my collection since I started with fountain pen inks, just wiping off some of the excess on the nib here. So this is Diamine, whoops, I remember this also coating the nib very well. Diamine, Coco Shimmer. Oh, it's just going on so thick. And then if you'll look at the line width here and what it's going to look like with you know a stub nib versus like a fine and you can see how much darker the thinner line is whereas in the swatch it looks lighter with the hints of the different shading so even in this particular brown you get the shading but then you also get that lovely gold shimmer so that one is diamine let's cap this here diamine cocoa shimmer if you like browns with shimmer this one is a great one the next one i have is another diamine ink but i don't know who would classify this as a brown it looks more orange but i think caramel sparkle at least deserves to be swatched with the rest of the browns because depending on the type of caramel it could be brown but this one with the gold shimmer in it looks more orange it's a very, very fun ink that I have had for about as long as I have had Coco Shimmer. But yeah, and when I put it down, why is it not going on the nib? When I put it, ah, there we go. There's the drop that I wanted. See, it looks orange. And I wanted to classify it in here because it's, it was one of those where I thought, is it, the name makes it feel like it should be classified as brown. So this is Diamine. I'm gonna do my figure eights above before I forget. Caramel Sparkle. And yeah, it does look more of like that yellowy orangey brown versus a cooler brown so this is definitely a warmer brown and you can see that it is more of like that lighter brown in the uh, different line widths there so what I am discovering is that you know for me brown isn't simple at all it's got a lot of complexity to it or else at least the ones that I have definitely have that complexity so is it brown is it green is it pink so far, the ones that I've swatched, can't really tell. <laughs> Next, we have Diamine Dusted Truffle. And this one I received in December. I believe it was from a lovely friend who sent me quite a few of their 2022 
Dye Mine Ink Vent Inks, and this one I loved. This one ha is a bit of a, br well, a bit of it. It is a brown, but it has some silver shimmer to it, and it is fantastic. I used this in my Leonardo Memento Zero in the Via Latea, and I think it was just such a great match. The silver shimmer in this makes it look more, uh, what do I say? How do I describe that? It's not as like red brown, you know, it's going towards more like the yellowy brown. So this is dusted truffle. I love this one. And doing the line widths, oops. That's not a very good one. Okay, let's do another one but I really, really like this one. And it was so fun to use. And then that silver shimmer just shines off of it. It's, again, not your typical brown, but you can see it now as it's drying. It is less of a warm brown and going more into the cool. So that is Diamine Dusted Truffle. The next one I have is also from Inkvent 2022. It's Diamine Yule Log. And this one has a different base of a brown, but then I believe this one has gold shimmer. And this one was also really, really fun to use in December. I just had a whole bunch of fun being able to use all of the Inkvent inks from the previous year. Love that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at that duster truffle and I love how that silver shimmer looks in that. So getting some on my brass nib. And we have a diamine. Oops. This one is like just as wet as cocoa shimmer. Diamine Yule Log. Yeah, different base of brown with gold shimmer. Oh, I love that. This was also fun to use, and I think I used this in an extra fine. No, I can't remember which nib that I used it in, but it was just so fun to use and see all that shimmer. So that is Diamine Yule Log. Now I thought actually it looked very similar to Coco Shimmer, but now that I'm seeing it, and comparing it to Coco Shimmer. Coco Shimmer is a warmer brown than this one. And then the shimmer in there is actually, now looking at it, is like a copper shimmer versus gold. So I love that, love that. Next one we have, let's move that back up here. The next one I have is Diamine Walnut. And it looks like there's some stuff stuck at the bottom, just to clear that out. Okay, so Diamine Walnut. And I did swatch this originally when I first got it, and it is dark. But I like it. It's, it's one of those, I feel like, comforting browns, your typical no-nonsense type brown. It's a dependable brown. <laughs> how, how, how would you describe that? So dye mine. Walnut. It's one of those darker browns that could almost lean to a black. So if you're wanting to add some color to your inks without deviating too far from black, this might be a good one for you. Cause yeah, you can tell even in like the finer lines here that it does look more brown black than just brown. So that is a dye mine walnut and that was sent to me by Miss Marilyn Darling. So thank you for that. Next we have dye mine weeping willow. I'm including this because even in the writing sample here, it looks like dye mine, or sorry, troublemaker kelp tea. And I've had a few people from, you know, who I've watched who have unboxed their ink vent calendars say that it is quite similar to that. But it is one of those lighter and less saturated inks. And I feel like it's almost a lighter version of Tr Troublemaker Kelp Tea. And I would actually count this as like 
No, I, I would think a tea is more of a brown green color. And even while it's drying there, I can see that it does lean a little bit more to the lighter brown. I don't know if this is something that I would necessarily use um, when writing. And it, all, it also feels a little dry. So this is Weeping Willow. And looking at the different line widths here, so we've got, you can see how light that is. And then, yeah, I feel like it is a very, very dry ink. But like now that it's drying, you can see that it is turning more brown and looks very similar, but like leaning just a little bit more brown than the kelp tea. So that is Diamine Weeping Willow. The next one I have here is Diamine Ba Humbug. Okay, I know many of you are probably gonna say, no, that is not a brown ink. I'm going to swatch it anyway, because I feel like it leans more towards like the reddish brown. So I feel like in my ink explorations, I also include inks that many of you argue with me about whether or not it actually belongs in that category. But this to me is more like a reddish brown, so I'm okay with including that in the overall exploration. So adding a little bit there so that I can get some of the shading. So this one has shimmer. And I'm surprised I don't have more ink on my fingers. So we have diamine. a uh, humbug and if we do the figure eights first and then see when I do that it looks more reddish brown but in a writing sample it looks more like darker purpley brown I would still include that just because in those line widths or the different line widths there it does look like it leans a little bit to the brown but the shimmer in that is lovely i mean in the swatch it looks more purple brown here it looks more brown and then it's it's so different i absolutely love that so that is diamine ba humbug next we have andorillium tulip moth warm and i never know if i'm saying that correctly i use this in is it a 30 inks 30 days I can't remember or in a currently inked but I like this in the brown I like the way that this shades it's a really really pretty brown I feel like it's weird to say the brown is pretty because normally when we think of brown, we don't think of it as having so much complexity, but really it is a lovely brown. So this is Andorillium. I'm gonna knock something over here. Let's do the figure eights. Do Andorillium. Tulip. Moss. Warm. And we'll do the different line widths. It's so smooth on this nib. Beautiful. I really, really enjoy that. I think it's a great one for anyone to try. So that is Andrillium Tallib Moth Warm. Next, I have Birmingham Penco Projector Film. This was sent to me, given to me by, oh no, I can't remember. I've had a couple of people who have given me Birmingham Pen Co. inks and it's either Priscilla who sent them or Pam who has given or exposed me to my first Birmingham Pen Co. inks and what I love about this one is you're like is it brown? Is it pink? I have no idea and when it dries it's so different from when you first put it on the page so we have Birmingham And co. Do my figure eights. 
when writing with it and not just doing a swatch, it looks brown. So this is projector film. I love that. It's so different. You don't know whether you're going to get the pink or the brown or even a little bit of that green. I know not, there's some people who hate having that surprise or unpredictability with the inks, but this one is just so fun. It does look more pink and it does look very similar actually to, I'm going to move this over here so you can see it, to Kitsune Biori. You can see how similar those two look, but I classify them as brown. So that is Birmingham Penco Projector Film. Then we have another Birmingham Penco ink. This one is Fox Squirrel. I really enjoyed this one. I had this in a pen and now I can't remember though if it was a 30 inks, 30 days, or if this was just one that I had inked. I have maybe a mil left of this sample and I don't want to get rid of it. Oh, I love that. Do, 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 do. Gosh, I love ink swatching. I find it so meditative. It's it's a form of art. It's a form of art. It's a form of self-care. I love ink swatching. And then I love being able to look back in my ink journal and do and look through all of the different explorations, all the different ink comparisons. I just love it. So oops, that has quite a bit of ink on there. Birmingham. And co. And this one is Fox Squirrel. And do the different line widths. Oops. This is where some inks work really well. There's the nice big line width. Oh, I really like that. I have enjoyed that ink when I had that in a pen and I'm still keeping it because I do actually want to be able to use it in some fountain pen ink paintings. It's such a great brown to work with. So that is Birmingham Pen Co. Fox Squirrel. Next we have a more recent one. This is Ferris Wheel Press Workshop Wishes and this is actually currently inked in my Just Turnings Swirly Joyful Kismet. I shook it too much. That's okay. But this one is like a lighter, more yellowy brown with silver shimmer. And has it been fun to use so far? I currently have it inked with an architect nib. And wow, that's fun. I love a good architect nib. The architect nib is where you have the broad strokes when you are writing across and then the narrow strokes going down. So this is Ferris wheel press. Workshop wishes. And yeah, it does look a bit more of a yellowy brown but I would still consider this a brown ink. Lovely, lovely. Oops, and so far it's actually written really, really well in the pen. It's not dry and the shimmer does show off really, really well. So once again, Ferris Wheel Press, Workshop Wishes. Then we have a brown ink that I feel like most everyone has tried at least once. This is Herbon Lee de Thé. And this one was given to me by my secret Santa, and I'm really glad that they did give this to me. I wasn't sure how I felt about this, but I know that there are some people out there like Carrie of Pens and Tea that absolutely love this brown ink. I feel like it really is one of those safe classic brown inks where if you don't want shimmer, but you want just a little bit of interest when writing, but not something that's too crazy. Herbon. Lee. Oops. De Tay. And then 
the broader the nibs will make it come out more of like a yellowy brown and then the finer nibs you can see it does feel a little bit darker so that is her Bon Lee de Te, a very classic brown, which I feel like everyone should have at least tried at least once by now. Then we have one that may not fall in this category, but I mean, I've been putting inks in the brown here that are kind of green, kind of pink, kind of orange, kind of brown. <laughs> well, they are all mostly brown. This is Ink Institute Moonshine. This one was sent to me by Katie and it's more of like a light beige brown, but I like it. It's not one that I would necessarily use for writing, but it is great with painting. And when you actually add water to this and do a bit of a chromatography test, so many beautiful colors come out. It's lovely, lovely. So great for art, not necessarily the best for writing even when i'm writing with it in my brass nib i'm having difficulty so this is moonshine and i actually used this color to paint the daisies that are currently in my shop lovely lovely such a light light brown so that is ink institute moonshine next we have Waringal stone cutter song this one i didn't know whether to include this because i felt like maybe it leans more purple maybe it leans more gray i don't particularly know but i had included it with all of my browns and now i feel like when i'm putting it down it's like a brownie purple gray right brownie and brown purple gray a mix of these all but it's so fun this ink I used it recently I feel like and I really enjoyed the way that it went down on the page it was it I didn't have any issues with hard starts or anything at all oops a little ink there so this is wearing goal And in the writing sample, I feel like it looks more brown. Stone cutters. So. And this one also reminds me a little bit about, uh, reminds me a little bit of Kitsune Biori. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> All right, I really like that. So it does lean a little bit more to like the pinky brown, but I do like it. I really do like it. So that is Wearing Wool, Stone Cutters Song. And last but not least, the one that was sent to me recently by my friend S, it is Octopus Fluids Caramel. And this one, we have another caramel in here from Diamine and that was Caramel Sparkle. And that one was more orange than brown. And then this one is again a little bit more orange than brown, but I wanted to include it because I think sometimes caramel is brown or is that just me? So now that I'm looking back at all of these, do I really have a lot of brown inks? I don't know. So this is octopus fluids. And this is caramel. Yeah, I'm looking back through this ink exploration and many of you are gonna be like, you know, Karina, you really don't have that many browns. <laughs> so, let me know in the comments below what your favorite brown inks are and what I need to try. Because now that I'm looking through all of these, I'm thinking, you guys came here for a brown ink exploration and I've given you some that look yellow, some that look green, some that look orange, some that look red. And you're all like, sure, go ahead, call them brown, whatever. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait for these to dry and then I will give you a close up of all of these. Okay, so these are all the bottles that and samples that I was working with and from 
the tops of them, you're thinking maybe they could be brown. But now let's look at the dried samples. Okay, so Pilot Orochizuku Inaho looks more like a yellowy type of brown. I would consider that a brown. We're going over to Troublemaker Kelp Tea. It's more of a green brown. And even in the writing sample, it does have like a lighter greenish brown tone to it. Then we have Sailor Yurimeku Kitsune Biori. It's like a pink brown. <laughs> I'm laughing as I'm doing these because when I compare Sailor Yurimeku to pinks, it looks brown. But then when I compare it to browns, it looks pink. So I don't know where it's going to fit in. Then we have Diamine Coco Shimmer. And just look at that shimmer. The gold shimmer in there is lovely. It is, this one is a brown. It's definitely brown. This, this one isn't, you know, maybe lady green. I don't know, but this is a brown. Then we have Caramel Sparkle. Even in the video, it looks more orange and gold. But I could send, I consider this like an orangey brown, right? Right. Then we have Diamine a Dusted Truffle. With all of the shimmer, it actually looks more silver than brown, but it does have that base color of brown and it, it's just the shimmer that makes it look so different. Then we have Diamine Ulog. I love this one so, so much. I love the base of it. It's just so, so fun. Then we have Diamine Walnut. This one really, I feel like is more of a classic brown, but if you look at the swatch, you've got a little bit of a sheen going there. It didn't seem to come out when I put it down there, but there is a little bit of a sheen. So this one I feel like is a more classic brown than most. Then we have Diamine Weeping Willow, very similar to Troublemaker Kelp Tea, just lighter and has more pink in it and a little bit like a touch of green to get that kind of light, 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 light brown. I'm saying it's brown. <laughs> okay, and then we have Diamine Bah Humbug. Now that it's dried, no, it's not brown. It's burgundy or maroon with a pink shimmer. So no, it is not brown. And I apologize for putting that in there. Although when you look at the ink swatch, there is a pooling around the shimmer that looks brown. So I don't know. I don't know, maybe it's got a hint of brown in it. Then we have Andorillium Tulip Moth Warm. This one is a brown, but leaning a little bit more towards the pink. It looks more brown on camera than it does actually in the swatch, but I do really like this one. Then we have Birmingham Pen Co. Projector Film. In the writing sample, it looks more pink, but funny enough in the video, it does look a little bit more brown, purple. So it's interesting how the light does that to you. But I'm looking at it now. It is not brown. It's pink. Mm. And then we have Birmingham Penco Fox Squirrel. This one is definitely brown. And I actually really like this one. This one has beautiful shading. It's really, really lovely to write with. A great one to try. Then we have Ferris Wheel Press Workshop Wishes. This is a lighter yellowish brown with silver shimmer. Yes, this is a brown. Not your typical brown, but it is a brown. <laughs> and then we have Herbon Lee de Tay. And yes, this one is a classic brown, more of a warmer toned brown, but you can see it. It's in the writing sample. If you've got a fine or an extra fine nib, it's a darker brown so therefore if you want something a little bit more adventurous than a regular black ink this one is a good option for you then we have ink institute moonshine actually in the camera it looks like a lighter brown but in the on the actual page it looks more pinky beige so i don't know my eye is probably not the best for pointing out brown inks i need to get more just to experiment then we have Wearing Gold Stonecutter's uh, Song. This one looks like a mix of brown and purple and pink all together. I actually really, really like this one and I'd like to keep this in the overall ink exploration for brown. Then we have Octopus Fluids. In, on the camera, actually, it looks more orangey brown, but in the actual writing sample, it looks more orange. So, hmm, I don't know. So out of all of those, how many brown inks do I actually own? And there's probably a few of you going like, Karina, 
what kind of ink exploration was that? But really, there are some that do lean more brown and some that are just a mix of different colors. And it's so interesting to see the differences and what some consider like your typical normal brown, while there are some that have a little bit more complexity to it. So thank you all so much for sticking with me through this, I guess, hot mess of a brown ink exploration because I don't know how many. Let me know <laughs> what you thought of this. I'm just laughing at myself because I was so proud of myself going, oh, I have so many browns. And now that I see them all on the page, I think, no, I don't. <laughs> oh, well. But I think it was good for me to explore it a bit more to know what I prefer, what I can look for in the future when it comes to purchasing any brown inks. All right, but that is it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.